Welcome or welcome back to another Cyberpunk 2077 modding in minutes. In this episode, I've gathered some of the newest and prime must-have mods to add to your game. With Phantom Liberty being consistently updated, currently version 2.02 .02, as of the recording of this video, modders are also hard at work pumping out some of the most incredible mods. These will further optimize and clean up the UI, provide much more polish and quality of life both visually and gameplay wise. Be sure to let me know in the comments what mods you'd like to see featured in our next video. All mods featured today will be linked in the description below. So buckle up chumbers, here we go. Our first mod right off the bat is a gorgeous reshade, Phantom Visuals, a cinematic Ghost in the Shell preset. A reshade that is built to complement Ghost in the Shell 2.0 visual overhaul that was featured in our last video, and complement it does. This mod takes the core ideas of a bleak dystopian aesthetic and further elevates it. What you get is a more cinematic take on a darker and more grittier Night City. Done away are the vibrant colors which are now replaced with blinding whites that invoke a greater sense of isolation and hopelessness. There is an increased tension and unease as you step into the light, only to be overwhelmed by everything. It might be a little bit overexposed, but in some ways it feels much more photorealistic. And when the day turns to night, the stark lighting effects create a dark, miserable, almost Sin City-like feel. Perfect for this cityscape. I get that this isn't everyone's vibe, but if you crave that darker take on Cyberpunk, you can't go wrong with this. With the introduction of Phantom Liberty, you might have noticed many new styles on show in and around Dogtown. Whether it's hair, outfits, or a combination of both, there's really something unique about the look. And what really stood out to me is encountering NPCs with something I haven't seen before. I'm always excited to go, ooh, that looks real good, only to be disappointed that I can't actually have that for myself. Let's start with Phantom Liberty Hair Collection. This mod gathers up all of the new hairs and allows you to pick any of them for your V, and that includes both male and female variants. With how Cyberpunk works, you will need to decide which one you wanted as it will replace hair option 1 in your character creation screen. All in all, this should add some extra flair to your character, out with the old and in with the new I say. When it comes to Cyberpunk and your waifu options, most tombs will either pick Judy or Pan Am, and if you're team Judy, well, I have just the mod for you. Judy Enhanced Body with 4K Textures. This mod aims to overhaul Judy with a unique body, separate from other NPCs. The author states they've given her a unique chest that's slightly bigger compared to the original, as would fit seamlessly without clipping. As Judy spends a lot of her time, arms crossed, you know, feisty vibes and all. Her tattoos have also been touched up for more clarity and sharpness, as well as removing the neck flickering problem that can occur from time to time. As with the title of this mod, the textures have also been increased to 4K, and of course, for the deviants that are checking closely, a new 3D remodel of her. <coughs> this mod is fully compatible with two popular mods, Judy Romanced Enhanced and Nibbles to NPCs if you want to, you know, do naughty things or take screenshots. I'll even hook you up with a link down below, no charge. Just like and subscribe. Is that a, is that a Supra? 2JZ engine? No shit. You know, this would decimate all after you put about 15 grand in it or more if you have to with overnight parts from Night City. And with this mod, Toyota Supra, you can have absolutely prime styling when it comes to owning a 90s JDM classic. This JZA80 Series 2 Supra is modeled scarily accurate, both inside and out even down to the fine details like the placement of lights and blinkers to the interior wraparound dash and bezels. It truly feels alive as they aren't stock features of the car and that someone in universe lovingly modded up the car. And it sounds so good. Just listen. I can't help but smile from ear to ear as I tear through the streets, burning up rubber. This mod itself does come with two options, the stock body which just comes from the aftermarket wheels, or the modified version which includes the body kit and wing as shown in the footage. 
You can't go wrong with either. So when it comes to iconic weapons, I was so excited when it came to customizing my weapons with mods and attachments to give it that unique edge, only to discover that most iconics don't actually have slots. That was introduced by CDPR with patch 2.0 and Phantom Liberty. Well, introducing Unlock Me A Slot. With this installed, you can unlock either one or two slots with all of your iconic weapons again. Now, you have full control of the features you wanted with your favorite iconics. Want a non-lethal Satori? Sure, now you can lovingly slap around your victims without fear of killing them, because that makes sense. But screw sense, I'm here to have fun. Now you can try out all of the new mods introduced with the recent version of the game. But also, have you noticed that with mods installed, you can't actually remove them? Which is why Unlock Me The Mods from the same author is a perfect duo of mods when it comes to customizing not only your iconics, but all of your weapons. This mod allows you to remove and add mods and attachments from equipment, whether you added them yourself or you found them in the world through enemies or loot. Even things that made sense, like the ability to remove muzzles and scopes, you can't actually do that in the vanilla game. Another change that went through with the 2.0 release. Another bonus feature is that all mods are automatically retrieved on selling the weapon, disassembling it, or even dropping it. I never understood this change as it would mean you'd have to hold out until tier 5 mods would be available to slot into your equipment as opposed to using the lower tiers. This just allows you a steady progression as you played through the game, allowing you to replace equipment and their mods as you leveled and gain access to newer and better effects. Seriously, get these two simple yet game-changing mods. Speaking of mods, particularly of the scope variety, have you ever noticed how busy they all are? Whether it's night vision or tinted, they are all so distracting. It's 2077, they should all have absurd resolutions or something. Which is why you gotta have cream scopes. This mod aims to remove all of the busy visuals so you can focus on your targets. Things like scoped glitches, scan lines, tints, and 3D HUD effects are all removed. Immediately, visuals are so much clearer as you can definitely feel the improved flow of gameplay whilst aiming down sights. The scope of the work also extends to things like reducing the distortion effect, as well as our favorite element, the vignette. Is, is that like a thing now that everything has to have vignette? I mean, I do like it from time to time, but it's everywhere now. Even menus, but that's a rant for another time. Anyway, deep breath. Like our next mod, Immersive Breathing. Another simple yet effective mod that provides a tiny bit more realism to the game. And you know I'm all about those little details. Now, you will hear subtle breathing during walk cycles as well as an audible breath while sprinting. With an exhausted V having a breathing recovery animation that is played while unarmed. Which is fantastic as it won't interfere with any combat. For further touch of immersion, there is a slight cost to actions like jumping and sprinting. These shouldn't really break the flow of game, and you can definitely do these activities in a prolonged state. While we're on the immersion train, why not add Immersive Food Vendors Dogtown and Immersive Bartenders Dogtown to your mod list. When the game first launched, I really wanted to be able to walk up to a food store and eat whatever they had on display. I wanted to feel like I was a part of Night City, interacting with it. Now I can, at least in Dogtown. As of this moment, the author has only released the DLC exclusive area. As with the whole of Night City, that would be a much bigger task with extra features like sitting and leaning, which is scheduled to be released at a later date. Still, both these mods add another level of polish to the game and I'm all for that. You will have the option to buy a few food items from the vendors which fit into the hand animation, such as burgers, hot dogs, sandwiches, and even sushi. And if you wanted something a little bit sweeter, there is fruit and pudding too. Yum. They all cost a measly 25 eddies or so and will give you the sated buff upon consuming them through dialogue. As for drinks, you have to visit either the stadium, the Heavy Hearts Club, or the Moth Bar to be served. Don't forget your ID. Wait, did I even check? Anyway, you can buy a few alcoholic drinks or even a soda for the bartenders, and of course receive the appropriate drunk or energized buff, depending on what is consumed. Maybe now I'll purposely consume alcohol in the game. I don't think I've ever done that apart from story scenes, now I think about it. While on the topic of food, why not make it look more appetizing? With HQ Fast Food, 
all those bland and boring looking foods can head straight to the waste bin. Now look at this pizza. Now back to me. Now back to this burger. Now back to me. I'm a hot dog. What's in your hand? A sandwich. You're welcome. Just stop putting food on the table without plates, you barbarian. That's how you get sick. And when you do, you will need a doctor. So grab Immersive Rippers and Immersive Rippers Dogtown. With Phantom Liberty, Cyberware has been the central focus and overhauled into the best version of this system to date. And both these mods add another layer of realism to this, as you undoubtedly spend more time in the Ripper seat, literally. As each time you visit a Ripper to get work done, you climb into their seat and have a discussion about upgrades. And it's all these small details that inject more ambience to the game, interacting with Night City more and more. Now that you're all chromed up, why not give V a distinct new look with some visible cyberware? This time with the Songbird Cyberware Player Body. This mod borrows a lot of the elements from Songbird's aesthetics and lends them to V. While it's not a one-to-one -one copy, the author of the mod has provided plenty of choices for customization. What you get are a selection of body cyberware and cyberarms. Included is an optional head cyberware if that's your jam. Just be mindful that some hairs won't play nicely as others. All of these options will include a bunch of different color combinations from black to black steel with multiple color cables and wires. Even your mantis blades can be matched with heaps of different colors and glow effects. And you could spend a decent amount of time customizing the look and ultimately still look phenomenal. So get out there and show Night City what you're made of. And with that, you've made it to the end, Chumba. It'd be hell on over if you can drop a like, heck, even subscribe while you're at it. Most of you don't do that, but for those that do, thank you, thank you. If you are interested in live content, I do stream over at Twitch. Links below. As always, wash your hands, look out to each other, and be your very best. Bye for now.